Hello, my friends. Asthma. I bet some of you suffer from it. And I used to quite a bit. And today I'm going to show the changes that I made that made a profound difference in how I breathe. Right now we are reading a book called Breath by James Nestor. An awesome book if you're interested in the power of breathing and different ways that it can influence your physiology. That reminded me of something I've wanted to do for quite some time, which was to talk more about my experience with asthma. As you probably read in Chasing Turkeys, I did something that made a profound difference, but I didn't go in depth in the book do exactly what I did. So today I want to go deeper. Now to start out, asthma is one of those things that's considered incurable. And regardless of how we want to interpret that word and what it means, it's not something that I've completely gotten rid of in my life, but it has become so inconsequential at this point that I can do things before that would have caused some pretty severe asthma and not even notice that I have any asthma going on unless I really pay attention and say, oh, I can hear a faint wheezing or I can feel a little tightness in my, in my breathing. So I'm not necessarily saying that what I did created a, a medical-based cure, but it certainly created an effectiveness-based cure in the sense that Asthma is not something that is relevant in my life anymore. And I'll share a little bit of my experience with it. Mine was primarily cold and exercise induced. So if I would go for a run in the summer, I would have some asthma. If I would exercise in cold weather, I would have a lot of asthma to the point where I would not have what I would call an asthma attack because I'd done enough mental training that I could always keep myself calm but my breathing would be to the point where i would feel almost like fainting at times now it was also allergy induced and the primary culprit is one of my great loves in life which are horses i would have severe allergic reactions with horses that would manifest primarily as a deep asthma and i would want to be around these animals but I could hardly breathe when I was around them. And that, that was a tough one. It was something that I really wanted to overcome because I loved horses so much. And it's the same with movement and exercise. I very much wanted to be able to exercise wherever, whenever I wanted and not have this problem with breathing. For me, I stumbled on what became a solution for me a little bit accidentally. And this had come out of the aforementioned mental training, trying to be calm under stressful situations. And I got to the point with the horses where I would be working with the horses, doing some riding, and breath was not there. I could not take anything deeper, maybe than uh, 16th, of a lungful it would feel like, <coughs> start coughing and wheezing. And I'd go home after these experiences with the horses and I remember on the drive, the only way I could breathe was just to sip air. And I'd sip it in through my nose very, 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 very slowly. And then I'd exhale either through my nose or my mouth. And I would never allow myself <sighs> to go into panting mode. Now, this is something I've used in numerous aspects in my life. It's the same thing that I teach people when we plunge into the ice water, is if we start to breathe faster, we're going to increase our stress response. We're going to increase our physiological need for air, and we're essentially going to create that asthma attack. So I would sip, sip, sip on the air, super slow just enough 
so that I had exactly what I needed. Over time, I started to discover this, this had a lot of benefits. So in my jujitsu, I could be being smothered or choked out. And if it was a lack of air, I could sit and sip the air and be comfortable in situations that before would have been claustrophobic or made me feel like I had to thrash or panic in order to get out. If you've rolled in jiu-jitsu and you know you're, you're really in a compromised position and you start thrashing and you don't get yourself out, you're in more trouble than before you began your thrashing. Again, you're increasing that need for oxygen. During my turkey chasing days, there I had the asthma that I was battling essentially when I would go out in the winter woods chasing the turkeys. And so again, I had to remember that sipping of air. And I was trying to increase my breath hold, if you remember. So I got myself up to a four minute breath hold. And I did that largely through changing the way I breathe. So I started to see that this different way of breathing had multiple benefits. And when I went to Hawaii, I wanted to increase my breath hold again. Unfortunately, I never timed my breath hold there to see how long I got it, but I wanted to be able to dive deep to explore all the nooks and crannies way down below. And so, inspired by free divers, I never got close to that level, but inspired by the free divers, I worked on my breath hold a lot. And it wasn't just doing the breath holds, but it was remembering the power of this slow breathing. Essentially, what I did is I would get my body used to less air. Now, there's different names for this kind of training, and I've experimented with doing it when running or doing calisthenics, but changing the way I daily breathe, I think is the thing that created the most benefit. Rule number one is never to mouth breathe, to always breathe through your nose. This is most difficult when we're talking. So when we're talking here, it's, it's just faster to take a little gasp through one's mouth. So when I say never, here I am doing some mouth breathing as I speak to you, but I'm also bringing in air through my nose as much as I can during the speaking process. But in general, if we're not speaking, to always be breathing through our nose, never through the mouth. This makes me at least much more conscious of my breath. And we know that there's a huge filtration system in our nose that is not engaged when we breathe through our mouth. So there's a lot that goes on when we breathe through our nose as opposed to the mouth. Now, as I breathe, and breathe slowly. Inhale very, very slowly, consciously. Exhale very slowly and consciously. Not all the time. And here's a beautiful thing about this kind of slow breathing is that it also brings me to present moment consciousness. Slow breathing is one of those habits that as you develop it, you're going to notice when you are breathing fast. So I tend to have that as a marker now. Fast breathing, whoa, I'm being unconscious. I'm not present. And go back to that slow breathing through my nose and whoa, brings me back to reality and out of whatever head trip I was in. For me, I also do longer exhales than my inhales. And I'll linger sometimes on those exhales. Not all the time. But throughout the day, I will play with what some people would call oxygen hunger or that sensation that we get when CO2 has risen a little bit in our blood. And that is that, that feeling that we need to breathe. If we're not used to that, the average person, if they hold their breath, usually within 20 seconds, 30 at the most, they've experienced that sensation and they're gasping for breath. But this, like many other sensations, is something that we can get used to in life. And the free divers I was talking about, 
a beautiful example. When I was doing my breath holding, I got very used to that feeling of having that excess carbon dioxide. Now, I haven't really researched the science, but there are some people that feel, and this is in that book, if you read it incidentally, that we are in general over oxygenated and we don't have enough CO2 in our blood. And this sounds strange because we think of CO2 as a waste product, but it is, uh, you know, oxygen, if you look at it, is is a, a toxin in some ways as well. So are the things we don't understand about the physiology yet in that there's a, a balance of these two that is optimal in the body? I don't know the answer to that question, but I do know that I feel really good when I play with that a little bit. Now, I'm not actually suggesting, unless you want to try to increase your breath holds or do other things like that, that you go really deep into becoming comfortable with that feeling of that excess CO2. A few times a day, I will breathe in. And for me, I breathe in for about five seconds and then I will exhale for, boy, I'm gonna say maybe 10. And as I get to the end of my breath, I'll let out a little bit more air, a little bit more air, actually empty my lungs, and then sit there with that sensation just for a moment, just a tiny little bit, feel that hunger, and then breathe again. But when I breathe, and here's a key, I don't <gasps> gasp. I try to just sip in the air, cherish it, love it, enjoy the experience of it. Making breath conscious. The final thing I do is I play with filling my breath up completely. So I'll do some yoga breathing where I'll lay on my back. This is maybe once a day. And I'll fill up my abdomen, then fill up my chest, fill up my throat, not to the point where I'm uh, straining. I never do any of this to straining unless, again, I'm doing the breath holding. But to the point where I feel fully, like I've taken a deep, good breath, and then exhale fully. I'm trying to work the lungs at either side to their full potential. So to break this down, basically the big change for me was, first of all, changing my daily moment to moment breathing into the four breaths per minute range. I changed location because of the wind coming up. That becoming my daily breath consciousness, if you will. Then, once during the day, to play with those long exhales and a little bit of CO2 hunger. I do this for, I'm going to say, two to five minutes. Not a long time, but I try to do it every day to empty those lungs out completely and sit there for a moment and then bring in air consciously instead of gasping. I'm practicing being in that hunger stage and not just devouring the air, but choosing when I'm going to breathe and doing it calmly. And then finally, taking a few of those yogic breaths every day, trying to fully fill the lungs, fully exhale. And I do usually about 10 of those a day. Exhaling fully at that end, you can make a noise if you want, or just push the air out, like you're pushing it through a straw, and push, push, push until it's all out. It feels like you can't do any more than doing a little more. I'm not as aggressive with the inhales, I'm a little bit aggressive with those exhales, and then deep filling belly, chest, throat, and full out. This change of breathing I attribute to changing my whole experience of asthma from being pretty bad. I used to use an inhaler a lot in my young years to putting that down about 15 years ago and never touching one again. And it was a pretty direct replacement, replacing it with breath, changing how I breathe. Of course, like anything else, if you're having trouble with asthma, thinking about whole foods diet, tons of time outside, good community, 
all the foundational aspects that make our life healthier. Meditation is central and definitely tied in very strongly with breathing. But this shift of breathing can be super powerful. All right, my friends, so much love to you all. Share your thoughts in the comments. Have you ever experienced asthma? How have you dealt with it? Have you ever tried these techniques of breathing? What did they do for you? Love to you all.